Hello data pros, welcome back to another episode of our DBT series. In our previous video, we learned what DBT materialization is and mastered the first three materialization techniques named tables, views, and ephemeral. In this video, we'll take the next step and explore the other two advanced materializations, incremental and snapshot. Let's consider one of our existing models, which is currently being materialized as a table. As we know, this means that this model results in a table in the target data warehouse. If the target table already exists, it'll be completely replaced, or in other words, dropped and recreated every time the dbt run, or any equivalent command is executed. This approach works fine for smaller tables, but it can be inefficient for larger tables. For example, let's say we work on a retail order management system with a source table that contains 1 billion records of order details from the past three years. The source table is updated daily with 1 million new records. If we're asked to transform this data and load it into a separate table, we certainly don't want to transform the entire three years worth of data every day, because this would result in unnecessary costs to the company and significant delays in downstream processing. This is where incremental materialization comes in. Incremental materialization only extracts the rows that have been added to the source table since the previous dbt run. This can drastically improve the performance of our data pipelines. This is a code snippet outlining the incremental loading process. We're already familiar with the first two constructs, config and model SQL. Additionally, incremental models include a Jinja if block that checks the is incremental value and conditionally adds a where clause to the model SQL. The is incremental macro returns true only when all the following criteria are fulfilled. Let's now apply this to our order stage model. This is the main code block that determines the delta rows from the source. Here I've outlined some of the delta approaches used in real-world projects. This is an internal dbt variable that results in the target table name corresponding to this model. We're basically extracting rows from the source that were added after the maximum update time in the target table. If you anticipate potential delays in data arrival, you can include an appropriate offset. I've added here a 6-hour offset as an example. The third case utilizes a filter based on the current date minus 7 days. This can be useful for re-aggregating data from the past week. For our demonstration, let's implement the first one. Before executing this incremental model, let's review the results of the previous load in our data warehouse. As you can see, all rows have the same load timestamp confirming that the entire table was recreated with each model run. For demo purposes, I'll add some new records to the source table. Now, let's execute our incremental model. Returning to the data warehouse, we can validate the target table. Unlike previous table materialization with incremental, we now have two different dbt updated at timestamps. This clearly confirms that only incremental records were extracted from the source, underwent transformations, and were then loaded into the target table. An important aspect to note is that this setup exclusively inserts new rows. However, what if some rows in the source table are updated? Incremental models can seamlessly handle updates too. Simply add a unique key value to the config block. From now on, dbt checks if records with this unique key exist in the target table. If they do, those records are updated, if not, new records are inserted. If your data warehouse supports merge, then this optimally executed as a merge operation, combining both insert and update together. Let's simulate updates in the source table. Returning to dbt, we shall rerun our incremental model.
As seen in the target model SQL, this time, the merge operation is executed instead of insert. Not just that, the records are updated in the target data warehouse accordingly. Perfect. Now that we're familiar with incremental materialization, let's proceed with snapshot materialization. To understand snapshots, we first need to understand what a slowly changing dimension is. As the name implies, an SCD is a type of dimension table in a data warehouse that holds data that changes slowly over time. For example, let's consider our customer table. Most of the data fields available here can change over time. Most of the time our OLTP sources may not care about the history of these changes, so it may only maintain the current values. But as an analytical system, we may need to preserve historical values. For example, the data scientists in your company may want to know the customer's city as of the order date a year ago. There are many types of SCDs, but the most important ones are Type 1, Type 2, and Type 3. Out of these, DBT Snapshot Materialization implements Type 2 SCD over a mutable source table. This is a code snippet for Snapshot Materialization. As mentioned already, this implemented differently than other conventional materializations. It starts and ends with snapshot Jinja tags. We should create a SQL file inside the snapshots folder. Configure your target schema. Mention the unique key that should be used to locate the existing records in the target table and mention updated at, a column name in your source table. DBT uses this column to determine if a row has changed. Finally, we need to write the actual model SQL. Unlike conventional materializations, snapshots are run using the DBT snapshot command. Let's validate the results in our data warehouse. In addition to the business columns that came from the underlying source table, DBT has automatically added these four additional columns to the target table. The DBT valid from and DBT valid to columns are the most important columns for data analysis. They allow you to know which rows hold relevance for a specific date. Please note, during the first load, all the records are loaded with DBT valid to as null. Let's simulate a scenario where one of the customers has changed their phone number. Once we have updated the customer's phone number in the source table, we can rerun the dbt snapshot command. This will update the snapshot table with the new phone number. Let's check the customer records in the target warehouse table. We can see that the previous record has been end dated with the appropriate dbt valid to value. This indicates that the record is no longer valid and a new record has been inserted with the current value. Absolutely fantastic! With the snapshot materialization, DBT takes care of all the complex SCD Type 2 logics behind the scenes. Let's discuss a few more important points. If you do not have a valid timestamp field in the source table, you can use the check strategy instead. In the check strategy, DBT will check the source table for changes based on the check columns that you specify. If there are any changes, it will materialize those rows in the target table, just like the customer history table we've recently seen. Another important configuration to know is the invalidate hard deletes parameter. By default, DBT ignores record deletes from the source table. However, if you set this parameter to true, dbt will find the hard deleted records in the source table and set the dbt valid to value to the current timestamp in the target table. This in effect makes the specific customer as inactive in the target table starting from now. That's all I for today. Please stay tuned for our next videos, where we'll deep dive into productionizing our models. Please do like the video and subscribe to our channel. If you've any questions or thoughts, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.